All right, we've got all five chefs today and we're making pancakes. We had to agree before we got started here because Nick wanted to make some crazy thing. Kyle wanted to make some other wildly different thing. We had to agree on what a pancake is. And this is what we agreed on. It's a battery thing poured into a pan-ish thing and you flip it. Them's is the rules. Kyle's on a corny cake. Matthew is gonna go hardcore on the plant base. Uh, Nick's gonna go real naughty. Otto's gonna go a little traditional, but a little romantic. What I'm gonna do is take something that's already like a made thing and just make it a little bit better. That's five pancakes, five ways. So when I was a kid, my mom used to wake up really early in the morning and make it some crepes. The recipe is very simple. Similar ingredients to what you find in a normal pancake. However, the ratios are different because the batter needs to be thinner. So to start, I'm gonna sift the flour. Sifting is very important because then it'll help you get all the lumps out. Then I'm gonna add sugar, just a pinch of salt, and then I'm just gonna give it a stir. Next, I'm gonna add the milk. Don't be afraid to use brown butter. It's sweeter, nuttier. And now we're gonna add four eggs. Do not over mix, this is very important. As the flour hydrates, all the lumps will go away. In the interest of time, I do have one that I made earlier. The lumps that you can kind of see, it's actually the butter that's solidified a little bit in it. All the uh, lumps from the flour are gone. Now I'm just gonna take some of my extra brown butter and then just brush a pan that's been sitting on medium high heat. I'm gonna add about two ladles. At the same time, I'm gonna be swirling around so I can cover the bottom. So I want this to be really thin. I'm gonna take a spatula and just start moving just the edge. Cook this until it's just slightly brown on the bottom. Ooh. I hope you got that one because that was perfect. <laughs> right, so how are we gonna finish this? Very simple. Spoonful of dulce de leche. Spread it from top to bottom. Literally just going to fold one side and fold the others. And then I'm gonna turn it over so it's fold side down. Then I'm gonna sprinkle some sugar in the middle. Now the next step, not everybody has one of these at home, right? And this is what my mom used to do. Turn the gas stove on, put your fork on it, Make sure it's really hot. And then just you know, caramelize the sugar. I know it's simple, but it's so nostalgic. It takes me back so much when I was a little kid. This for me is opening my lunchbox and just finding this in, amazing. I wish I could eat, I don't know, like a stack of them. Herloom Dulce de Leche Crepes, amazing for bread. My pancake is a corn cake. It's a really crispy pancake. It's got a lot of texture and it's also gluten-free. That's one reason I like it. But we are going with a Oaxacan heirloom corn that we're gonna grind ourselves. So we're gonna start with this, blend it up. It's gonna be loud. All right, so we've ground it up into flour. It really doesn't take that long, about 30 seconds or so. You get a nice white flour. You see kind of the red little spots from this. Now we are gonna strain it because we don't want any straggling chunks in there. You can go again in here and keep doing the sifting, but this is just kind of showing you a quick process on it. You can feel a little bit of the grit in there, which is great. That's gonna give us some crunch so it's not completely like soft flour. In our dry mix, what we're gonna start with is our sugar, salt, and baking powder. That's gonna be mixed together. Our wet mix here is whole eggs, whole milk. So we'll mix all this together. That's good. Dry into wet, avoids a bit of the clumps. With normal pancakes, you're gonna worry about over mixing because you got gluten. No gluten here, so we don't need to worry about that at all. You're gonna see it's kind of nice and loose. Now we're gonna add our warm melted butter. Now that we're fully incorporated here, you can see it's pretty liquid, right? If we went right onto the griddle from here, this is just gonna spread out and be super thin. So at this point, we're gonna let this rest for five minutes. Some of that baking powder is gonna start to activate and get a little fluffy. Here's our texture we wanted after it's been resting for five minutes. It's still nice and thick. One nice heaping scoop. It's not like a big pancake. Right in the middle, once I start seeing it fully set around the edge, we're gonna give a little extra butter so we get that crispy edge bit. Add a little bit of butter around here. Just sounds like crunchy crispiness. Let's see if we can flip it without breaking it. Success. Cook this about 85, 90% on the other side, so we really just need a touch of heat here. All right, we're all done. This is how I like to eat mine. I love egg with this. Egg, sausage, and this corn. It's delicious. It's like its own little sauce. Just a little, oh, so beautiful. So there you have it, my crispy corny pancake.
pretty dang good. For my pancake, I'm going to take something that already works perfectly fine, store-bought pancake mix, and I'm gonna make them less naughty. One of the things I like to do is add cottage cheese. One, because it's super tasty, uh, but also it's just like really good lean protein. I'm gonna take it a step further and add a little bit of protein powder, and that's it. Mix and cold water. First of all, I know why they say water, because it's just cheap and easy and that makes sense, but I would add milk or almond milk or oat milk or something with flavor. That's it, super simple. But the one thing I am gonna do is mix my liquid stuff and protein first, because the more I'm mixing the pancake batter, the chewier the mix is gonna get. Is there like a version of dairy-free cottage cheese out there? Matthew. Matthew, I got a question for you, bro. First one's gonna be chickpeas and flaxseed. Have you ever seen a product that's like a plant-based cottage cheese type thing? Ooh, that's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Cream cheese, yeah. Yeah. But cottage Not cheese. like the, with that texture and uh, little curds. Ricotta? And... Yes, but not. Ricotta. Yeah. You can put it in anything. Want to eat chocolate chip cookies? Throw some protein powder in there. And because the scientists did their homework, I just have to add this until it looks thick enough. I think I added too much. I definitely did. Add a little bit more milk. I'm going to go for a little bit shorter, like, plumpier, guys. Ooh, stopping there. Since I'm going with a thicker pancake, I gotta go slower on my cook. Same thing, thin steak, harder, faster. Thick steak, lower, slower. I like this temperature, but I'm not sure. It smells good too. I'm gonna add like a double scoop to these because this scoop's like a little small. So if you're gonna make a bunch of pancakes for people, you make a little batch, use it, a little batch, use it, because there's a short half-life on the batter. If you want a fluffy pancake. Yum. These are done. That's it. Da 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 da. Do 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 do. Pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. Look at those little cheese curds in there. Got all that protein. It's yummy. Mm. Lean on the scientists who made the mix. Lean on the other scientists who made this mix. Put all the mixes together. Today we're gonna make a vegan griddle cake with pumpkin pie spice. This recipe is a, an homage to plants, so no eggs, no dairy, no animal products. The batter, we're gonna start off making the dry mixture, and then we're gonna make the wet mixture. Rolled oats, gonna grind into a fine powder. You can use a spice grinder or a blender. I did experiment using steel cut oats, which is a little bit coarser, and it does add a texture to the pancake. So if you have those, go for it. All right, into the bowl. Flax meal ground up there. So we got the almond meal or almond flour, baking powder, salt, pumpkin pie spice. Go ahead and give those a little mix. Time for the wet mixture. Soy milk and then maple syrup and vanilla extract. I already have the vanilla extract in pre-measured into the maple syrup. Make sure you get all that stuff in there. Dry mixture, wet mixture. We're gonna marry the two together. And then we're gonna finish with the coconut oil. You don't even have to add the coconut oil for a little bit more flavorful pancake. All right, that's it. We're gonna get to cooking. You're gonna cook them most of the way through on one side. Otherwise, you won't be able to flip these since the structure is a little loose. That's how I like to do it. Take maple syrup that you're gonna drizzle on the pancake anyway, add some coconut oil, and then some fresh berries. And just warm that up. Let's give these a whirl here. Right from the side. Looks good. Good to go. Time to serve them. Stack them up. Got our, our berry, maple, and coconut oil mixture. We've got raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries here. Toasted coconut's gonna add a little bit of uh, texture. I'll just take a couple here. A plant-based, gluten-free pancake that has the soft texture like this one is hard to come by. I mean, that's a good pancake. What am I bringing to you today? Molten lava chocolate pancakes. It's gonna be rich, decadent, sweet, a little bit of bitter. Let's get started. We're gonna start with AP flour because that's what you all have at home. Cocoa powder, pinch of salt. The salt is key because these are lightly bitter. So we're gonna add baking powder, a little baking soda, Swiss this up. We're not gonna sieve it, you don't need to. Nobody wakes up in the morning and like, I wanna spend the first three hours making pancakes. No, you gotta make them fast. All right. Most of the wet, so two eggs. One little tip too you can do with pretty much any pancake is separate the yolks and the whites 
Set the whites aside, mix your base, and then whip up your whites to stiff peaks and fold those in if you want those super fluffy pancakes. I'm gonna add some vegetable oil. You can use butter, sugar, granulated or organic. Could even sub in brown sugar if you want. And we're gonna add buttermilk now. Buttermilk is acidic and that's gonna help activate the baking soda. So I like to add the wet to the dry. Found with this recipe, you can dump it all in. We're going for ease here. Look at that, you can already see the leavening agents kicking in. Look at all those bubbles. This probably has a shelf life of maybe 15, 20 minutes at top, so you wanna make this when you're ready to use it. Um, you can tell this is really thick. And these are not gonna be pretty looking, but they're gonna be the best tasting. I'm gonna go for how many pieces of chocolate? I'm gonna go for six. So we're gonna pack these bellies here. We're gonna add like a three quarter scoop, push it around, cover up that chocolate. So we're actually gonna cover it. This is gonna generate steam in there and it's gonna help speed up the cooking process. So three minutes on the first side, flip three more minutes, and then we're gonna decorate it. All right, let's see if I can do this. I always like to check the edges. Oh, almost went off. We're okay, we're okay. Good, 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 good. Already nicely seasoned and sweet, so you don't need too much honey. A little lava salt. I like the salt and the butter. Salty, sweet, fatty, rich, decadent. Should we cut into it? Whoa. Look at that, super gooey. I'm gonna go on record saying this is the best of the five pancakes, so it's molten. <laughs> what? 